Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Wilson and today I'm going to talk to you about finding and fixing stress zones in your home. So if you're not familiar with me, uh, FitFizz is all about finding energy and having enough extra energy to really enjoy life. I know that most people are underrested, overworked, overtired don't know where their next burst of energy is going to come from, but I want to help people try to rein that in and find their energy. If Again, if you're not familiar with me, I went through quite an autoimmune journey. I'm still on that journey, but I'm mountains. I've made mountains of improvements on my own. And one of the biggest lessons I've learned was that I really needed to learn how to manage my energy in every way, every sense of the word. So part of that, you know, when you're home, that should be your sacred space to have the most comfort and safety. And so what this video is about is just to give some thought to that, because if you're super run down and exhausted and tired and you feel like you're never home and you're always running on your last nerve and last bit of energy, um, I know the last thing that you need is more stuff to do. But, you know, you can find little, you can find little moments of time to just start tweaking little tiny things and all of that eventually adds up, which is why I have my tagline, celebrate victory. Because if you can just do all those little tiny things, those are reasons to, those are victories because they all add up to feeling a lot better overall. So, the overall idea is making your home the happiest place that you possibly can um, so that when you are there, you do have more of a sense of peace and you like you like where you're at, um, even if it's not your dream home. But um, one of those things, so here's one thing, um, I don't know, depending on how you were raised, maybe you were, maybe you weren't always taught to make your bed. I know if you were in the military, that was the thing. You always have to make your bed, right? Um, I like to have my bed made, but, you know, and I'm not saying this is what you need to do, but it's something to think about because some people operate better when their bed is not made and that's okay too and I know you know if you're the person who's constantly had everybody tell you your whole life you got to make your bed you should make your bed if your bed's not made you're gonna have a bad day if you're always hearing that but you're like I don't care about my bed this is permission if you need to hear it to let it go because it, either way there is no right way for that you know I like to have my bed made but sometimes when life gets crazy it's just easier not to, and I get that. So don't let anybody tell you that you're wrong if you leave your bed unmade. But if you feel crazy and stressed out and you never make your bed, try making your bed. See how it makes you feel. See if it makes you feel a little bit more sense of peace at bedtime. Um, another thing, I have a few things written out so I don't forget. Let in more natural light. This is a big one. This is a big one for me. And again, maybe not everybody gets this. Maybe you think I'm a total weirdo. But that is something big for me. Um, I love it when I have, I don't have to turn on the lights in my house because there is enough sunlight. Um, I get kind of sad when I have to close my shades at night because it's dark out and I don't want anybody looking in because I love the natural light so much. And also even because the way the angle my house sits during the winter time, if I, so usually when I'm working on my laptop, I'm sitting at my couch with, with my little lap desk right there. But if the sun is out, it comes piercing through my window. Like it hurts my eyes. Like there are times I've gotten like instant migraines so many times because, so I, you know, sometimes I have to close the shades during the day, unfortunately. And I, so another big reason I need to move out of Illinois as soon as possible, but um, let in the natural light. Um, so I know some people don't even think about it, but see how that helps you feel. And unfortunately, if you're gone during the day, um, this time of year, for most people, you come home, it's dark out. You might not see a lot of daylight, but do what you can. If you are in an office all day, I've had worked in a lot of offices where I could not see any windows from my desk. And that, I think... I think it's pretty tragic. I think it should actually be illegal to work in a place where there is no natural light that you can possibly see for the entire day. Um, so if you work in an office and you 
have no, no natural light, do whatever you can, even if it's just to take a walk around the office just to get some kind of, be able to see some kind of daylight, it might turn your day around and help you feel a little less stressed. Even though this is really about um, your home and your home environment. Another big one, cut the clutter. So this is a big one for me. I don't like having stuff around. I don't like stuff. I like very simplistic things. I made a uh, comment on Instagram on my graphic design account recently that graphic designers have been Marie Kondoing since before anyone knew about Marie Kondo. And I think that part of my, my disdain for clutter just comes from the brainwashing I got in graphic design school because <laughs> um, we're always like, get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it, take this out, take this out, take this out. I love throwing stuff away. Um, but I know a lot of people str struggle with that. You might struggle with it because you, your brain just doesn't work in that type of aesthetic. Or I know there's an emotional component too, which can really be a trauma response. If you've been through some things in life, it, uh, you know, like the TV show Hoarders, that's not a personality flaw or anything like that. That's, I think those people go through that because of a trauma, an untreated trauma that they've been through. It's, has, has to, it's some kind of coping mechanism. So if that's you, that's something to look into. But maybe dip your toe in the water and start throwing things away. Um, start realizing that it's, you know, it doesn't really affect your life that much to throw a lot of things away. Um, get rid of things, resell them. Um, I've sold a lot of personal belongings since I lost my job, and I'm not a fan of the time that it takes to do that, but, you know, I kind of had to do it. Um, but it's nice to not have that stuff. I've always had kind of had a personal rule. Uh, to ne I never have my closet more than, like, it's, my closet always stays half empty, no matter where I've lived. And I just like that rule. Um, because nobody needs that many clothes. <laughs> I think that's just crazy. So declutter as much as you can, everything. Um, I mean, I even had one boyfriend criticize my junk drawer <laughs> because it was neat and tidy, but that helps me to feel less stressed out. When things are tidy, I feel calmer on the inside. And again, not, that's not everybody, but you might wanna try it out. If, you know, if you've never really explored that area of life, Try decluttering. Um, clean, and you know, it doesn't have to feel overwhelming. Start in one area, keep going. Also too, I gave a, this advice to a friend recently, where she was like, I just don't know where to start. I wanna get rid of all this stuff. I, it all feels so overwhelming. Time yourself. If you just set a timer for say, five minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you can manage to squeeze into a day, set the timer, five minutes and go! And see how much you can clean up, straighten up, get rid of, and, and that's it. You did, did it for the day, you could do it again tomorrow or do it the next weekend or whenever it works for you. But that time, like you'd be surprised if you really focus how much you can get done. Also, de-stressing uh, stress zones at home. Bedtime, this is a big one. Um, I did a podcast on basic sleep hygiene, so subscribe to my podcast if you haven't already. But also... Um, Sleep hygiene, if you're not familiar with that term, there's so much you can do. Um, I'm thinking about making a course on this one. There's so many courses I want to make, but I got to prioritize everything. But um, sleep hygiene, um, part of that is making a bedtime ritual. Ritual. So it's pretty common that kids have one, right? But why not adults? Um, it's, you know, we're all human. We all go through, you know, the excitement of the day, and then we tend to bring it down. And if, especially if you're a type of person who can't sleep, give that some real thought. See where you can improve. Um, if you're sitting there, you know, zombied in on your device for two hours before bed and you can't sleep, no wonder. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's a lot of scientific, uh, scientific studies behind this to back it up because that blue light, it tells our brain it's time to wake up, not go to sleep. Um, and I could talk about that forever, but... Create a bedtime ritual, whatever helps you calm down and stick to it. And because not only is it, you know, doing it one day is going to help bring your stress level down so you can sleep better, but as you, as you get into that ritual over time, 
your body goes through the motions like, oh yeah, this doing this, this, and this means it's time to wind down. So you're going to feel even calmer and less stressed at bedtime as you do it more. Um, another thing, add more plants. Um, if you've never done this, try it out. It adds more life. Um, it gives you a... Uh, it, it really improves a room. You can feel an actual difference. So try adding plants. And another big one, This I kind of already mentioned this, but time your tasks. I do this for everything. And I do it because it's it makes it things more fun. And I compete with myself to try to improve my time. And it makes things immensely more productive. And if you're more productive, you're gonna feel a little bit less stressed because you feel like you got things done. And you might end up with extra time for other things. So time your tasks, just start doing it, whether it's a um, timer on your, on your phone or um, you can use the alarm or use the timer or you can use, I've had this timer that my mom gave me when I went off to college. Oh, where is it? It's usually right here. I don't know, it's probably in another drawer but an actual physical kitchen timer, sometimes I use that. So time your tasks, you'd be amazed at how much stuff you can get done if you start timing things and compete with yourself. Try to do it better the next time. So those are some tips. Thank you for joining me. And also be sure to check the link in the description. Join my free Facebook group for lots of lots more fun tips like this. Um, and if you need any cheerleaders for sticking to your health and fitness goals or nutrition, join us in there, the Fit Fizz Raw Energy Oasis. Hope to see you there. Thanks. Bye.